uh, for this really insightful comments on the work and the presentations that have been done. Let me, <clears throat> we have 10 minutes left, unfortunately, as I have so many interesting speakers in, on this panel. Um, let me give quick some reflections on trying to wrap up the kind of things that have been said in my view and were important to uh, reiterate. And then as giving the final floor to all for a one minute final comment to close uh, our uh, session of today. So what I'm hearing and what needs still quite some more discussion and we might, make, we might need another one hour or two hours to, to, to elaborate on this, but we don't have the time now, of course, is first of all, what I'm hearing and I think is quite right is, although it's very important to start from a contextual perspective, looking in this case at the media sector, when we try to govern AI being so horizontal in many sectors, we need a kind of a governance across sectors, as we mentioned by Jose van Dijk, by Natalie Helberger, and by many others. Uh, luckily, that we see some issues happening, some things happening, like making links between competition law, data protection law, antitrust law, and how they can feed into each other and help to organize uh, this in a better way. In the UK, there are some interesting developments in that area on the market and competition authorities and data protection and Ofcom. So I think what we need indeed is to look deeper, what also been mentioned, into the computational infrastructures, what is happening there. And, as, and in order to protect these key requirements, uh, these European key requirements, we need to dive deeper and then only doing sector specific regulation, but looking more at, across sectors for this. The second point I'm hearing is, and that needs st still quite some discussion, I think is, which was also mentioned in the in the, the morning session, in the opening session, is uh, the relation between regulation and innovation, which is an old uh, thing, of course. And uh, what I'm hearing from the panel members is some say, well, regulation is a driver for regulation. Others say well, regulation is a bottleneck for innovation. And I think poss probably, possibly there is midway that you need to uh, tackle it in a, in, a, in a sensible and a smart way. Uh, looking into issues like, for example, when you talk about uh, consent, indeed, uh, there is the cookie thing, but there is also the idea that we do want still have citizens to have agency about what is happening with their data. And we're talking about AI, what is happening on the level of processing and how they are put into some kind of choice architecture, which they don't understand possibly, and you need to fill them in and have them having a choice on that. We might want to look into frameworks like contextual integrity in that regard by Nissenbaum that not so much wants to go into consent, but more looks into what can we, what should uh, citizens be entitled to? What kind of capabilities, to use Amartya Sen's perspective, should citizens have when we talk about AI and then taking this into relation to innovation? And the third one, which I want to stress is also, which has been mentioned by many speakers is, we need empirical grounding. We need operationalization. Operationalization as from for AI technology, not having this fluffy uh, kind of pictures from the from the stock images about you no know, real AI. What does it mean? It's often most often software indeed, but it means something very basic sometimes. And and we need to give a, a sensible and a, and a, and a, and a realistic picture about this. And informing citizens about this and but so we need to ground this but also grounding research on this and 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 knowing that uh, how can we do research how can we build up the independent research uh, remarked by Afra Kerr if we want to understand what the possible consequences are we at least need to be able to investigate them and the problem often now what you see is when you want to investigate this we are talking about of course black boxes and to some extent protected by trade secrets, which is understandable, but you could expect from a public interest perspective that there should be some kind of access to investigate what is happening in reality and not having this kind of narratives existing that, that are kind of often over uh, technological deterministic or under technological deterministic, whatever angle you want to take. We need to have some uh, research being able there and, and, and opening up these kinds of things. So. Uh, empirical grounding of, of technology, empirical grounding of research, but also of uh, regulation and how to, to make operationalize this from a regulatory side. The example in the morning session was given 
of the, the algorithmic uh, regist registries in Amsterdam and Helsinki as a nice an idea about what cit cities might want to do to open up how they kind of process data of their uh, citizens in a local area and make create some transparency around that. And as a final remark, which I've heard a lot coming back and which has been mentioned by a couple of speakers is the notion of trust. So citizens and the idea that to what extent can people trust these systems? Uh, Jose van Dijk has been talking about epistemic trust in that regard and that we move into a kind of industrial technical uh, model of trust instead of a, a kind of an institutional professional one. What does it mean? What does it mean when you kind of have citizens trusting these systems because they don't want to be get involved in all the nitty gritty of some kind of complex technology, but they just expect that these do the things in the benefit of all. But what does it mean? How can this be kind of safeguarded? How can this be improved? What, what are the kind of angles you need to take to, to not have this kind of um, jeopardizing the trust of citizens regarding these uh, AI systems, and especially in regarding the key requirements which I've been talking about. Okay, that I think that's kind of the main points I heard and what I think is really valid to take on further and further discussions. We have four minutes left. Uh, perhaps it's very uh, ambitious of me, but yeah, I'm kind of still gonna try. Uh, can each speaker just give a final one sentence reflection? What did he or she take away from the discussion today? I'm gonna and I'm gonna interrupt you also because to keep the timing in that sense. So let first of all, Jose van Dijk. Okay, thanks, Joe. And I think you did a very good job in sort of summing up what we have just discussed. It was a wonderful and very wonderful discussion with many different perspectives. But I think we do have a common ground here. And that common ground is how do we build a trust trustworthy system where all of us can actually contribute to what trustworthiness means. And that I think has been, you know, the the magnificent contribution of today's discussion. So thank you very much for organizing this. Thank you. Natalie? Well, I think if um, if I something became very clear to me again today after listening to all these amazing experts is that what you are trying to achieve here is true team science. Uh, and I, I was I was deeply impressed by the fact that each of us highlighted a different aspect uh, from from her or his background expertise and all these little pieces of the puzzle in the end will constitute the entire picture. So um, thanks, thanks for, for uh, shepherding this report and, and managing such a diverse group of experts. And I think that's, that's the only way forward. Thanks, Natalie. Phil? Yeah, my, my biggest takeaway, and this often happens when I participate in these kind of events in Europe is uh, just, struck by how much further along and how much sort of more um, collaborative and, and genuinely multi-stakeholder-ish the conversation is uh, and how much more uh, forward thinking it is than, than, than where we are at currently in, in, in the US on this very same topic. Thanks. Uh, Stephen? Yes, thanks. Um, well, I think the conversation, it showed just how entangled these issues are. And, and, and so congratulations again on making sense of this uh, enormous complexity. And it's so important that we do establish a framework as, as early as possible. Of course, there are risks that need to be managed about not causing a bottleneck uh, for innovation. And I, I particularly like Paula's point that this is a process that you know, getting a framework up as soon as possible isn't the end, it, it's just the start. Yes, indeed. Robert, Robert? Robert, yeah, so I, I would like to say simply that I think picking up on that process point, if we use AI and related technologies as an opportunity to learn as a society, perhaps to relearn as a society, how to do uh, innovative regulation together, how to make sense of new stuff, that will keep Europe at the cutting edge. So I would say there's there's opportunity to build on what we're learning here to be innovative in our framing of the new technologies. Thank you. Cornelia? 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Yo, again. Thanks for, for this conference. And I, I will try to build on Philip and Robert's points. I think that it, I would even go further. I think with AI, if we do it right, if the governance models are set right, we have enormous opportunities to actually do what we do now in a much better and transparent and accountable way. So we, we need to manage the risks, but there is tremendous opportunities. And to Philip's point, I think Europe has a, a, a huge um, advantage because of its um, built out human and fundamental rights frameworks that will help. And, and this, this always shapes our conversation in Europe and compared to conversation that I participate with in other regions, it is one of the huge advantages that we should all benefit from in, in making um, AI really trustworthy. Thank you, Camilla. Uh, Elizabeth? Yeah, sure. So I, I was just thinking actually that I think it's really encouraging that we've seen lots of different diverse views today. Um, but they've all been interesting and all recognized one another's limited, uh, one another's kind of um, views on this. And I think if we're developing a framework, we should think about how that framework looks like. And to that end, what I mean is that I think we need to continue to have conversations. We need to co-create. So it's being together as a, as a group, as a, as, a, as a people and to grow that group. We need to understand how to compromise. And I think everybody here recognizes the importance of compromise. It isn't one thing or another, it will ultimately be a compromise. And I think we need to do that with humility and we need to do that with humor. And I think if we can get all that right, we will get to where we want to be in Europe and it will be a proud place when we get it right. Yes, well spoken, Elizabeth. I have the impression Janne has dropped out of the panel. I don't see him here. So then Paula? Uh, yes, so as a philosopher, I, I'm going to take away from this how looking in at the real complex practical applications of this area, um, the real details of a practice is, is actually a really rich source for understanding really abstract philosophical con concepts like agency. So, so uh, actually, so one thing I take away from it is examples which I use in discussions with my philosophy class. But, but, but more in terms of in terms of in terms of taking forward in this area, I think that it just is a really good opportunity for a continuation of a dialogue between our, our really abstract values that we want to keep hold of and 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 a practice. Thank you, Paula and Afka. Um, what's left to say? Um, maybe just two things, I suppose, when we think about agency and we think about the agency of the technology, um, sometimes the designers of the agency don't have, have much agency because of uh, the companies they're in or the competing demands that they have to, to satisfy. And so I think we have to think, how can we support people who, who want to work in the best interests so or maybe in the public interest, but, but maybe in the current context in which they operate, they don't have the possibility to do that because of other competing demands. So I think if we, if we keep that to the forefront of our mind, uh, that, you know, despite the best efforts of many, we might not get to where we want to do, but because this is constantly updated, the services, we can also adjust the regulation. So that's what I would hold on to. Thank you. Thank you. So this concludes our session of today from the media and technology sector. There are many other interesting sessions happening on different other sectors today and tomorrow. So I really encourage you to, to listen and to also to these sessions. As only, only left me to thank uh, AI for People for the opportunity to work on this interesting uh, interesting report and this, uh, these meetings we had. And I also take on the advice of Natalie that we want to link in with other initiatives that are happening elsewhere in Europe. So that's uh, only the way to go forward to not work beside each other, but with each other. And also I want to thank also as a, on a practical side, my colleagues and advisors, Julia, Valerie, Rosanna, and also my colleagues, Ine and Anna Popsifania, who've been really brilliant in supporting me and establishing this uh, network and having writing the report. Uh, as a last quick small thing, what I want to ask, do, would you agree to have a kind of a, a virtual group photo on this, that to have an idea about uh, that this thing has happened? And I would like to ask everybody to put uh, 
put uh, on his or her camera and then you can make a small screenshot that can be used for further uh, communication later on. So if everybody then that does it like that, okay. Let's make them a quick smile and we have a group picture virtually also. So thanks again, everybody. I hope you have a nice day and this can be are able to listen into the other sessions and hope to meet you in other occasions or other conven conventions in another uh, space or time and hopefully in a, in a physical way and not only in a virtual way and stay healthy and see you all. Bye-bye.